Everybody, this is Dale Mama Sal, and it's Thursday. Yay! <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I don't work on Fridays, so Thursday is my Friday. And particularly nice this weekend, we have a long weekend here in British Columbia. Um, it's Victoria Day on Monday for us, so that's uh, really good. So, there are going to be a lot of people leaving town tomorrow. Uh, that's for sure and uh, this real serious start of what I call the um, trailer season or caravan season for those of you who are in England and by the way a very big uh, shout out to all my British viewers because wow in the last few months you have really been amazing <laughs> I can just keep looking at the figures and going wow whoever knew that the Brits would actually recognize one of their own. Maybe, I'm not sure um, what's caused it, but I'm really very, very grateful. So uh, thank you all for those of you in England who have become viewers and subscribers, and uh, it's really nice to meet you. I wonder, I'm, I, I'm not sure if I can even do the really in-depth uh, analysis to find out you know, what videos brought you on board and I can't help but think that maybe it was the halogen ones that brought a lot of people on board because, um, you know, Britain is very concerned with um, the cost of energy. Uh, I can remember way back even when I was a young person in England living in London, um, you, you didn't have a bath without putting money into a machine. You know, hot water was not a privilege. Hot water was something you paid for. I can always remember that. Uh, it was quite a shock when I <laughs> hit the real world and went, I've got to put money in. And even hot water to wash my dishes, you know, was not a given. You had to put money in to get it. So uh, I know they're very energy conscious. And whatever your reason, thank you so much. <laughs> just wanted to let you know that you've overtaken the Canadians can you believe that and not just by a little bit by a lot so uh, you know when you start this process of being a youtuber you have no idea quite honestly um, where, where it's going to lead you to and I think that's the, the the one thing I would say is that Although it's difficult to start a YouTube channel, when I say it's difficult to start, you know, there's so much to learn and it's very discombobulating along the way. But what makes it really interesting is where it leads you. And I, the reason it makes me chuckle is, as a lot of you know, I would never in a million years have thought that I would end up cooking and, and doing experiments on a halogen oven. Um, I, that just never would have been in my, you know, of all the things I could do. That wouldn't be it. But that's obviously where the market uh, wants me to be, to some degree. I've just seen a great bumper sticker in the car ahead of me. <laughs> it says, the driver carries no cash. The kids play hockey. I think, I don't know why that strikes me as really funny. Um, yeah, right. Isn't that cute? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know where your parents spent their money. Mine was on... Um, mine was on... riding lessons and things. I was into horses, not hockey, and I think horses were way more expensive than than hockey. But it kept me off the streets, as they say. Um, I wanted to call, I was going to do um, this particular vlog on laughter. But life got in the way in the last 24 hours enough that I am led uh, to talk about two other things. 
Um, and I'm going to call this the the joy in the pen because it's amazing how those two things seem to come together. I was looking forward this weekend to going to uh, dinner with the, a couple of students that I've helped in the past. And by the way, one um, I got a call to give one of them a reference and they got the job, so I was delighted about that. And then, so I'm really looking forward to meeting them all and getting lots of hugs and catching up on how they're doing. And I'm gonna be doing that on Sunday. And then, yesterday when I got to work, there was an email in my box at work from a young student that I had helped back in, must be six years ago now. Uh, I did some work at the Boys and Girls Club. And what I did was, uh, I, I was given a group of young people who wanted to make a positive difference. And what we did, what I did with them was to help them learn how to do a presentation and the, pres the subject that they wanted to talk about was bullying, which is you know, a great subject. I took it from inception and you know, they came up with the ideas, they came up with all sorts of stuff and then I taught them how to put the bare bones of a presentation together in terms of what were the main factors they wanted to put in. Then we added in some personal stories around those main factors. And then we did the creative around it all. Uh, we shot some video, which was great fun. Um, while they demonstrated different sorts of bullying, including cyber bullying. And it, it was a, an amazing process. But during that, that experience, experience um, and I guess we spent a good couple of months together doing that. During that experience um, I met a young lady and I got an email from her yesterday and said that I was, I was the best mentor she'd ever had and she wanted me to know that I thought that was very touching uh, and you know could she have a cup of coffee with me and I said absolutely so that obviously felt good to know that you know I've always said if you uh, you know there's a famous quote that a hundred years from now well, what sort of, people won't care what sort of car you drove or what sort of expense account you had um, but it may make a lot of difference if you made a difference in the life of a child you know hundred years from now they won't care but maybe you will have passed on something that will be of value to somebody else and that's why I always believe in doing what I can to share with young people and it's amazing how many times it comes back uh, to me that that it made enough of a difference in their lives that they will never forget it. And so, and that doesn't mean telling young people what to do. That means encouraging them in what it is they want to do, as long as it's not unlawful or going to hurt them in some major way. Um, but also letting them make the mistakes and still being there for them. One of the things I really spend a lot of time saying is, hey, you know, I can give you options. You need to make the choice because it's your life and I don't know the right decisions for your life. But right or wrong, whatever the decision is, know I'll still be here to support you. And I think that's what most people want. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about this is what I've decided to do for now. Anyway, so there was a lot of joy in all of that yesterday. And, you know, joyful memories, uh, I laughed a bit, I chuckled about it, and so forth. And then I got home last night and got a call from a friend who apparently has been in a lot of trouble. Uh, 
and that was painful to hear. Very, very painful to hear. And I thought, boy, was that a balance in the day, all right? I'd, I'd, I'd had a moment of sheer joy, and then I had a moment of straight between the eyes. My God, I did not expect to hear that today, or any other day, quite honestly. So I was absolutely stunned in that moment. And so I thought about the fact that, you know, really the joy and the pain of life, you know, visits us in so many ways, so many times. And I wonder whether for most of us, we only remember the pain bits, we don't remember the joy bits. Because what I really was joyful about when I thought about it later was that the person who'd been in having really some serious problems um, trusted me enough to phone and tell me the truth. Even though that truth meant they had to admit to lying to me about something previously. And I thought that took a great deal of courage and, and that made me humbled in, in a way. When you look at it, life continues to be in balance. And I know for some of you, you think, gosh, you know, I've had nothing but a run of bad luck. And I, I wonder whether that's true. Or whether you are just not acknowledging the, the good stuff that comes because you're so busy focused on the bad. Only you can look at that. Um, and I know that quite often having somebody else look at it is quite eye-opening. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had that where you, you really got a situation going on and you know that you're right and you know the other person was wrong and blah, 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 and you talk to somebody else and they go, wow, I, I don't see that like that. And you go, what? And the other person will see it very differently and it makes you sort of look at it and go, wow, why did I jump to that conclusion? And of course, as usual, our perception is due to our values and upbringing and all the parts that make our life and makes us interesting but it also creates our perception so if you've had nothing but love and kindness in your life you know you're trying to look at life very differently from somebody who's been betrayed and abandoned or you know all those sort of things and it's not that they're stupid people it's just their experience of life has been totally different so I look at the joy and the pain of yesterday and go, wow, that was a pretty full day. And I know it was a pretty full day because, boy, did I sleep well. And the reason I was aware of that was because I actually had dreams I could recall. <laughs> and I must have stretched out early this morning, about quarter to six, I stretched out for some reason in my dream and created a charlie horse that surely woke me up in a hurry. You know, the whole of my left leg from the sort of calf down was in spasm. <laughs> it was so painful. And you know, it, it's you almost scream, it was so painful. And then, how on earth do I get that flowing blood again? It was horrible. Anyway, I did, thank goodness. Well, the good news is, and hopefully, that other than the fact I've still got a bit of a stuffy nose here, hopefully you can hear that um, I'm getting better by the day. I definitely am a lot stronger. My mentality is getting a lot stronger. And I, when I say my mentality, you know, when you're really sick, you, you sort of go on autopilot. The only thing is that as I get better, I notice that my eating also gets better. <laughs> so I need to just be aware of that one as well. All right, so here's hoping that you understand and can relate to the joy and the pain. Excuse me. Um, I've got a new air freshener in the car and I've got a feeling that my body doesn't like it very much, but I could be wrong. So be aware of the joy and the pain in your life. Don't be surprised when they come together or in swift succession to balance your life and be aware of it in other people as well in other words that some people will only concentrate on the pain when you know there have to be moments of joy 
And sometimes it's not a bad idea just to even ask them. You know, when was the last time you remember having something good happen to you? Sometimes people need to be reminded of it. If you're a new subscriber, thank you for watching. And for those of you who are not new subscriber, thank you for watching as well, just in case you think I don't appreciate that. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's subject, then please click a thumbs up below here. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Understand that in the more details below here, there are all the links to the various Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, type links that you might need. And also to the Dear Mama Sal blog site, which gives you um, a whole lot of other interesting things, including our pets page, which is one of the nicest things that I thought to add to the Dear Mama Sal network. Um, we, we have a page where the regular viewers and or broadcasters um, send in pictures of their pets and we keep a gallery of them and it's some really nice memories uh, not only of the pets but funny enough every now and then I look through it to, to remember some of the viewers that we've had and maybe have moved on to other things in their lives but it's nice to remember they were there and because that stuff is dated to some degree you know you get an idea of when they were there this is dear mama Sal saying thank you so much for watching Thank you for being here, because without you, I'd just be sitting here talking to myself, which is what everybody that drives the route with me every morning thinks I'm doing anyway. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now.